How do you find out the maximum number of stereoisomers a product can have? Appreciate you for this question, and it's raising the reason for the breaking down. All right, the first step into understanding how to find the number of possible stereoisomers for a compound is understanding chirality, because that's what connects everything within the subject. A molecule is defined as chiral if it's not superimposable upon its mirror image. So think of your left and your right hand, right? It has the same shape, same structure, but you can't rotate one to perfectly match the other no matter what you do. In chemistry, this happens when a carbon atom is bonded to at least four different groups. So for example, we could have carbon, this could be an OH, this could be a, a methyl group, this could be a ethyl group, and this could be anything you wanted. I just group myself, but as long as this carbon is bonded to at least four different groups, it's chiral. And a molecule is achiral if it's superimposable on its mirror image. So imagine you have something like a ball, right? Now let's say this ball has an axis of symmetry. So that means everything on the left is equal to the things on the right. Or it's the same composition on both sides. If you were to put that ball in the mirror, no matter which way you rotate it, flip it, or orient it, the mirror, the mirror is going to reflect exactly what the ball looks like. And the ball is going to reflect exactly what the mirror looks like. So it's going to be the same, nonetheless. So what I've talked about with the carbon atom having four different groups bonded to it, that is called a chiral center. And that's what we're going to need in order to find out how many stereoisomers a product can have. So first, let's try to identify some chiral centers inside of these molecules. So if you look at this, we know, we know that there are carbons on the end of each of these lines. So we can list them as carbon. One, two, three, four, five. It doesn't really matter. Six, seven. Six, seven? All right, let me stop. All right, next, we're going to need to find out if any of these carbons have four different atoms bonded to it or four different groups bonded to it. So we know this right here is a CH3. So we can cancel that out because it has hydrogen three times. This has hydrogen twice. So we can cancel that out. This right here is another CH3. We can cancel that out. This right here, let's see. This has a CH3 and a CH2. This is an ethyl, but this is also an ethyl. And this is a methyl and this is a methyl. So we can cancel this out. Same goes for this. This is a CH3. This is a ethyl group. So CH3 and then this has two carbon hydrogens attached to it. So we know this entire molecule is a chiral. So if you were to put this molecule inside of the mirror, it's going to reflect the exact same no matter which way you orient it. Now let's look at the second one. All right, now let's go to the second one. It's going to be easy, just like the first one. So if we start with the carbon right here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now let's find out if they're chiral or not. We know the first one is a methyl, so cancel that out. The second one is going to have two hydrogens attached, one right here, one right here. Cancel that out. Same as the third, the same as the fourth. Now, as we get to the fifth one, we actually see a bit of a difference. This one has a bromine group attached to it. Now, and this one is a, so it has a bromine group attached to it, it has a methyl at the top, and it has a butyl group on the left side. So because, oh yeah, and it's going to have a hydrogen group. Also. So because it has four different groups, this is a chiral center, a chiral center, and a six 